In this section of the course, we're going to create our first HTML page. Remember that HTML is a programming language that communicates instructions to your web browser. It instructs the web browser on exactly how the web page should be displayed to the viewer. HTML and CSS, which we'll explore later on, defines the way fonts, colors, graphics, and hyperlinks are displayed on your pages. Let's take a look at a quick example. If we visit a web page through our web browser, for demonstration purposes, I've loaded techcrunch.com on Google Chrome. You can do the same using any browser of your choice. As we can see, this page is composed of basic text, links, images, and font styling. Let's take a look at the HTML code that instructs Google Chrome on how to display all the elements of this page. To do that, right-click on any blank area of the page and select View Page Source. As you can see, this is the actual code that communicates the layout of the page. Although this looks like a fairly lengthy and complex block of code, HTML pages follow more or less the same structure in all pages. By the end of this section, you'll be able to interpret and understand what most of this code means and even program HTML pages on your own. In this lesson, we're going to go over the structure of a basic HTML document. This structure will be the foundational building block of any HTML web page. We'll start off with a very simple page and add several elements to it as we progress through this section. Before we begin, you'll need to open Notepad++ if you're on, on a Windows machine or Text Wrangler if you're on a Mac. Once you have the text editor open, we'll need to open the file corresponding to this lesson from the Downloads folder. So go to File, Open, and open the file. With the file open, let's go over each element and the instructions they convey to the web browser. First of all, the document begins with the doc type HTML tag. This tag tells the browser that the markup of the language in which the page is written is HTML. Keep in mind that there are different types of HTML standards when it comes to coding your web page. Some HTML standards are, are quite strict and instruct the browser to follow a very strict set of rules when parsing and interpreting the code. An example of this is XHTML. The XHTML standard will check to make sure all your open HTML tags have corresponding closing tags, and you'll understand what that means in just a moment. There are many other compliance measures that make up the XHTML markup. It's not necessary to explore all of these because for the purpose of this course, we'll be using the HTML5 standard. This standard is more flexible in its compliance requirements among browsers and is also the most widely used. Previous versions of HTML, such as HTML4, are even more flexible but lack some of the new features inherent with HTML5. We'll learn about some of these new features as we progress through the course. Immediately after the doc type declaration, comes the open HTML tag. The HTML tag is the building block for our page. Most other tags will be nested within the open HTML tag and the closing HTML tag. Keep in mind that an open tag must be closed to define the ending of the HTML page. 
Please note that when we work with other nested languages, such as PHP, the PHP code can be inside or outside the HTML blocks. However, for now, all the tags we work with will be nested inside the HTML open tag and the close HTML tag. The next tag in our web page structure is the open head tag. Similar to the HTML tag, the head tag must also have a corresponding closing tag. Note that anything contained within the open head and closing head tag will not be displayed visually within the content area of your browser. For a better understanding of the content area, let's preview this HTML page in our web browser to see what it looks like. To do that, click on Run. And in my case, I'm going to launch it in Google Chrome. You can select your browser from this list here. Here we can see what this HTML page will look like in our web browser. The content area is, this, is defined as this region of the browser window. The head tag contains important instructions for your browser. First, it identifies the title of the page. For this reason, the open title and closing title tags must be contained within the head tags. The actual title of the page should be contained within the title tags. The title of the page is displayed here. You can see that the title of this page is my first web page. And that corresponds to the text in between the title tags. The next set of tags contained in our head tags is the meta tags. Meta tags communicate with both the web browser and search engines to provide valuable information about your page. Let's start with the first meta tag. This meta tag is primarily intended for search engines. It's known as the meta name description. The description is followed by the content. It's the snippet of information below the link of a search result. The meta description describes the contents of the page to the searcher. The goal of a meta description is to persuade the searcher to click through to your website. If a meta description is not provided, the search engine will automatically generate one based on the content of your page. The next meta tag indicates the character set of the page. In this tag, the character set used is UTF-8. The explanation as to why the UTF-8 character set is used, among other alternatives, is fairly technical. To keep things less confusing, we've included some links for further reading on character sets. Next, we have the viewport meta tag. This is an important tag to include. Keep in mind that most users will not only view your web page through a computer screen, but also through a wide range of mobile devices. The viewport defines the user's visible area of a web page. The viewport varies depending on the device and will be smaller on a mobile phone than on a computer screen. 
The viewport meta tag gives the browser instructions on how to control the page's dimensions in scaling. The width equals device dash width sets the width of the page to follow the screen width of the device, which will vary depending on the device. The initial scale equals 1.0 sets the initial zoom level when the page is first loaded by the browser. This illustration provides an example of a web page without the viewport meta tag and the same web page with the viewport meta tag on a mobile device. Now that we've gone through some of the commonly used meta tags, let's go on to the next tag in our head tag, which is the open and close style tag. The code that is included within the style tags are referred to as style rules, and they define what is known as the page's cascading style sheet, or CSS. The style sheet can be used to define the formatting of just about any element within your HTML document. They can be used to format anything from fonts, line spacing, font color, table borders, image opacity, and hyperlink effects. This course actually has an entire section devoted to CSS because of their importance and frequency of usage. For this reason, all you have to know right now is that the style sheet is located in the head tags. The style tag on this demonstration page has one rule. Body color red. This means that all the text located in the body of this HTML document will be displayed in red. But we'll explore this in much more detail later on. The next block of code we see is a JavaScript function. Remember that JavaScript allows us to create interactive effects within web browsers. The head tag contains the JavaScript functions that will be called upon in the body of our HTML document. We've included a basic JavaScript function that will be used to convert the, a user's text input from lowercase to capital letters. We'll see the JavaScript function in action when we move on to the body section of this HTML document. Please note this course has an entire section devoted to JavaScript coding. So for now, we've only included a very basic example for demonstration purposes. The body tag contains the content which is visible within the content area of your web browser. It contains things like text, hyperlinks, images, tables, lists, and any other visible elements. In our example, we've included two items in our body tag. The first is just basic text. Since we've not defined the location or any other attributes of this text, it will be displayed at the top left corner of our web browser. We also haven't specified the font face, but if you recall, we did specify the default font color as red in our cascading style sheet. In a moment, we'll preview this document in our web browser and you'll see exactly how it looks. After the basic text content, we have a form element, the text field. We won't be covering form elements just yet, but this example demonstrates how we call a JavaScript function named myFunction to convert the input text from lowercase to capitals. If you recall, 
the JavaScript function was located in our head tag. We're now calling that function in the body tag. Let's preview the file again so we can see how this all comes together in our web browser. We can see that the text that was contained in our body tags is displayed here as it should be. The color is red and it's located at the top left corner of the content area by default. Next, we have our JavaScript function. To see how it works, type your name into the text field in lowercase letters and click anywhere on the screen to activate the script. You'll see the name in the text field converts from lowercase to uppercase format. And that's it. Once we've closed the body tag, all that remains is our closing HTML tag to complete the entire HTML document. This is the basic structure of an HTML page. In this lecture, we're going to discuss how to create a paragraph spacing between lines of text. First, let's take a look at the web page we've developed so far in our web browser. We can see that all the text content is on one line and we want it separated onto multiple lines. The first paragraph spacing that we want to apply is after this line. Now, in order to do this, we need to add opening and closing P tags around the text that we want to separate onto a new line. So now we've added the opening and closing P tag. Before the changes can take effect, we have to save our document. And now let's go ahead and preview it again. So now we can see that the, the two lines of text are separated by a paragraph spacing. Next, we want to add another paragraph spacing here. in front of the text input and the label enter your name. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll put an opening and closing P tag. Where we want the, the paragraph spacing. And then file save. And let's take a look at it again. And so there it is. Using the paragraph tag, we now, we now have all three lines of text on separate lines. Now you might have noticed that when we added a paragraph, it created a fairly large space. We can see a fairly wide gap 
between the first, second, and third line. It actually double spaced the lines of text. What if we only wanted a single line break? Well, for that, we'd have to use a break tag. To begin, type a block of text nested within a paragraph tag. We will then separate this block of text using a line break. Now we have the lines typed. We want to separate line one from line two. So to do that, we'll go ahead and type a break tag or enter a break tag. Now you'll notice that the break tag does not require a closing break tag. Now let's go ahead and save the file and preview it in our browser. So we can see that line one is separated from line two, and the gap is much smaller using the line break tag versus the paragraph tag. Now let's talk about the spacing between characters. Say we wanted to add a third block of text. So we'll go ahead and enter it in. We want to place this line of text five spaces away from sentence two on the same line. Let's see what happens when we add five spaces in our HTML code with the space bar and preview it in our browser. So I've entered five spaces. I'm going to save the file and I'm going to preview it to see if the spaces show up in our web browser. And as we can see here, only one space was registered. HTML ignores spaces, and this process is called white space collapsing. Spaces created by the spacebar, the tab key, and return key are all ignored when you write your code. One way to add additional spaces is to add the following tag. where you require your space. Your web browser interprets this tag as a single space. It's the equivalent of pressing the space bar once on your keyboard. So let's go ahead and copy this tag and just uh, paste it four more times. So we're trying to register five spaces. Now save your document and once again preview it. And now we can see that we have five spaces between line one, uh, sorry, between line two and line three. So that is how you enter single spaces in your HTML document. The header tag allows you to create emphasized text such as titles or headings. Header tags come in different sizes depending on the level of emphasis you require. Let's insert a few headers in our document under our existing text items. To insert a header, we'll start with the open header tag.
The one value represents the size of the header. The smaller the value, the larger the header. We'll insert a few more just to see some of the different sizes available. Now let's save our file and take a look at the changes in our web browser. So here we can see our four headers. Notice that header one within the H1 open and close tag is the largest. Header two, header three, and header four, which is the smallest. In this lesson, we're going to be working with formatting text, making text bold, italic, underlined, and other formatting options. Let's start with creating a text element and making it bold. We'll start by creating a new paragraph under our last header. Now to make this text bold, we would add the following tags around the text we just typed. Strong, that's a strong open tag, and a corresponding strong close tag. Now let's save this file and take a look at it in our web browser. So this is what the bold text looks like. Now we want a second line of text uh, directly under this bold text line. So using the tab key, you can indent just to keep the format of your uh, code clean and organized. This next text element, we're going to, uh, we're going to make it italic. To make it italic, you use the EM, EM, sorry, tag. And the EM tag does have a corresponding close tag. Now remember, if we want, if we want uh, this italic text line directly under the bold text line, we need to add a line break. And we'll add another break here because right underneath this, we're going to add an underlined text, which is created with the U tag. We can also insert a strike through our text using the strike tag. It also has a corresponding closing strike tag. So let's take a look at what this looks like so far. So here we can see we have our bold text, italic text, underlined, and strike through text. That's what it looks like in the browser. Now let's go ahead and just add another break. 
For this next line, we're going to combine a variety of different formatting options together. So let's type the text first. So we want to apply, we want to make this line of text bold, italic, and underlined. So we'll begin by adding all our tags. We can start with any, the order doesn't matter. So we'll start with italics and we'll create the close the closing tag at the end. So as you can see, the, the, the tags must be closed in the same order they were opened. And I'll save that. And so there it is. We have a line of text that's bold, italic, and underlined. Another way of formatting text is known as inline text formatting. Note that this is an outdated way of formatting your text. In the next section, we'll be using CSS to format text and other HTML elements. CSS is a much more efficient way of formatting text and offers a much higher degree of format customization. For this exercise, we'll change the format of header four using inline text formatting. We'll apply a font phase, change the font size, and apply a different color. In order to do that, we're going to start with the open font tag. The font tag has different attributes. One of the attributes is the font face. We'll apply the Arial font to this text. The next attribute is the size. And we can plug in any numerical value here. And the font color is another attribute. We'll change the color to blue. Next, we'll just add the closing font tag. And this is known as inline text formatting. So let's go ahead and save the file and preview the file in our browser. And there it is. We can see the header is much larger. It's now blue. And the font face is different than the other headers. It's Arial. 